Hello there everyone, my name is Amy, this is The Opinionated Woman, and welcome to 2022's Pride content. Um, last year was the first year that I ever made Pride content, and I had so much fun. It was my first year of being out, I was a proper gay bee, um, but I wanted to come in after a whole year, a whole year of being queer and all of the different experiences that I've learned and I wanted to come in and update things because I think a lot of people will be able to relate to this, especially other late in life queers. Um, so there's a couple of topics that I want to cover. Um, first, we're going to start off light hearted though. I got my first gay tattoo. <laughs> if you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, which I recommend, at The Opinionated Woman, we have fun there. I got this. <laughs> it says her name. Neotrad, beautiful piece by Gareth Doy at Kaklaki Tattoos. I'll leave the links in the doobly doo. Um, but yeah, that is just to, after a therapy session with my uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, I was like, uh, you know, came to the realization that I can't just put my name, like give my heart to any woman <laughs> who happens to pay attention to me and give me uh, validation. <laughs> so I wanted to stick that on my body and that is not the first I mean that's the not it is the first it's not the last gay tattoo that I'm getting for sure <laughs> um but with that out of the way to get into some more intensive topics uh or not intensive but some realizations that I have come to over this year and one of them being my demisexuality hi there I'm a demisexual queer woman turns out um I came to this realization earlier this year around February and I made a little clip specifically for this video so I'm going to leave that for you here hello this is Amy from uh February 27th of February um and I was just thinking about my demisexuality um, because it's totally changed the game when it comes to dating and I wanted to put this in <clears throat> to this little update video because it's a big significant thing that's happened for me very very recently um, as a filming this um, and I've had instances where like with a new partner we like jumped into bed really quickly and <clears throat> I always told them I'll never be able to finish until I get you know until it's happened more until I get used to the person more which should have been a sign <laughs> should have been a sign but it wasn't I'm gonna carry on getting ready um so I in those encounters when we got you know physical quite fast I was almost caught up in the other person's uh in in their flow and like I, I'm not saying that they made me do something I didn't want to do that's not at all what it was but it's almost it's almost addictive and like really super captivating when someone really wants you especially coming in from a person that it can be very I can be very um, codependent so and also I have very much struggled in the past with needing exterior validation rather than just getting validation from myself which is something that I've been working on very a lot very much a lot <laughs> um, so now that I've realized that I'm demisexual I can see that I was really almost drunk on them wanting me drunk on someone wanting me that much on drunk on someone physically physically being attracted to me in that way and validating me as an attractive viable partner that is worthy of being wanted even if it's in a completely lustful way and I was completely like taken up with that and in those encounters I would be so dissociated like I do struggle during sex with dissociation um, I have very specific things that pop into my head and it's very hard for me to stay present and I think that is why it's because it's too soon for me I'm not locked into this person I haven't completely gotten to know them to the point where I feel that I trust them enough that I can let myself go and feel in the moment 
rather than dissociating during the encounter. So yeah, I think it's going to be very, something very interesting now going into dating with that on my profiles and like with that being something that I'm going to mention to somebody because that gets rid of people who are looking for certain things quite quickly. Um, and it's a completely different, like, self-actualized way of dating for me, which is quite, quite interesting. But yeah, I just wanted to add this rambly little portion into this update video. <laughs> Back to me in June. I actually made a TikTok very recently about the same topic as this, and I hadn't watched that clip in so long. And then when I re-watched the clip, I was like, oh my word, I'm literally on the same wavelength. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that revelation has like completely changed the way that I date now because as I said in the clip, so much of the time I have ended up in sexual situations that I'm not ready for. Um, and now that I'm very open, you know what I'm like with these kind of things, I'm very outwardly demisexual. So I'm not going to let people um, try and convince me of things anymore. Um, I'm definitely much more about getting to know the person properly get to know the person um and then see whether we're compatible um and then that basis of trust and getting to know the person will in then make our sexual experiences fucking bomb because when i'm sexual i am sexual let me tell you like i sometimes when people talk about demisexuality and things like that they make it sound like we're so innocent and stuff like no <laughs> i just need to have a connection with you before i get to be real dirty <laughs> uh it's it's a realization that has only benefited me um completely and it's so funny because when i think of my reading from pride from last year the book that stands out to me the most is loveless by alice oseman which is about an asexual and aromantic character that is coming to um realize their identity and it hit me so hard and while i'm not ace and i'm definitely not a romantic <laughs> i am a romantic bitch let me tell you um it the book just really hit me more than i expected it to and it's obviously because asexuality is on a spectrum demi is on there and i am part of that which is a i obviously saw myself in it which is why representation like this is so damn important another thing that i've realized over time over this this last year is that I have started to learn a lot more about trans and uh, binary and non-binary uh, trans people and throughout like from watching YouTube being on TikTok a lot like taking in a lot of content by different um, people because before I would always say like I date women and non-binary people um, always being very inclusive you know like I wasn't just saying it for saying it's sake I was even like on I was have been in the talking stage with a trans person with a non-binary um person like in the last year and but i find from watching more and more tiktoks and um, more and more youtube videos the more i am finding non-binary people so attractive <laughs> like have you seen those people who are getting top surgery and going no nips <gasps> I was going to put my face into my pillow and scream, but I have makeup on. Oh, it's so hot. It's so hot. Oh my God. And like, it's not fetishizing or anything like that. I just find this completely like other people have nipples. Why should I have nipples if they're not going to be functional? I just think it's such a power move and it looks so incredible. And I'm just like, Ugh. so yeah, basically I become thirsty for NBs. <laughs> <laughs> whether they have top surgery or not like just that sort of not living within the gender conformity and completely making your own identity out of how you feel not the way society is telling you to feel is so it's powerful and it's attractive and it's um it's something I'm loving seeing because I have had explorations into my gender before a lot of people Ha say that if you question your gender that means you must be trans and that's totally not true I think all of us need to be able to have this discussion with ourselves to actually sit back look go, okay how do I feel about this am I actually cis and from all of those explorations even though I know that gender is a made-up concept <clears throat> I know I'm a cis woman I was assigned female at birth 
I identify with a woman, I always have been a woman, I always will be a woman. But I think it's a, just having that talk with yourself, I think is very important. And you never know, you might find out something really important about yourself that you never expected. Um, but that's why I think it's really important for people to uh, expose themselves to people that are different to them, because I have learned so much stuff. Like, even from watching, like, I love Colin Ari. Um, I'll put their, uh, their links below. This is them. They are just, I love them so much. And just from their vlogs, I learn stuff, let alone from the whole process of Ari's top surgery and everything like that. They're one of the people that went no nips. But yeah, I'm just finding enriching my life with the non-binary culture has just broadened my mind so dramatically. Yeah, like <laughs> it's just been a really great part of um, the queer community that I'm learning to see more. And it's just, it's a wonderful place to be. And I'm just so glad I'm out in a time where people can be out uh, in that way as well, because it's just so much more freeing for all of us. One of the things to do with dating that I have had to, um, <laughs> that I have had to come to terms with is that red flags are red flags no matter what your gender, which sounds really obvious, but when I started dating women, I think I romanticized the idea of women so much that there were some red flags that were so blatant. And I've spoken to friends and family since then. And they're like, Amy, <laughs> like, how could you not have seen that? I'm like, right, seriously. So now I'm realizing like, I'm starting to get to the point now that I've realized that in the past, I was trying to get other people to like me rather than actually finding out if I really like that person that I was um, getting into romantic entanglements with. Um, I was just so desperate for people to like me. I'm just like, please, please, please. So I was making all of the um, sacrifices and compromises and putting myself in uncomfortable situations because I'm desperate for that person to like me. When in actual fact, I need to really like that person to start off with. And I think that is a huge piece of like a result of the self-work that I've done on myself and I'm really proud of it because I have now in multiple occasions identified a situation that is not right and even though breaking up with that person would have been the hardest thing to do I did it and I have done it multiple times now and I feel so proud of myself being able to do that and <laughs> I just need to realize that I can't date women that are exactly like the men I used to date <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think coming to that realization as well as coming to the demisexual realization at the same time has completely changed the way that I date um, and I'm actually excited to meet new people in this kind of mindset <laughs> um, and I think the last thing that I wanted to speak about is um, something that I mentioned last pride and that's polyamory and monogamy um, so I had just started to like find out, like get a little bit educated on polyamory, um, at that point, uh, last year. <clears throat> but since then I have been in a polyamorous relationship. It didn't get to the point where we had like metamors and other relationships and things, but I learned a lot about the way polyamorous relationships work and a lot of the dynamics between people. And I find them very interesting and very useful. So from what I've found now as a single person from I've done this like exploration with myself like am I poly am I monogamous I realize I'm fluid I am not polyamorous by identity some people are polyamorous complete they that is how they are they have no other option and that's completely valid that makes so much sense for a lot of people but I think I would be comfortable in monogamous and in polyamorous situations I could easily fluctuate through both I don't think I would mind having just one partner but if I fell for someone that I thought that was poly I would also be fine with having that dynamic as well because now I've opened up my mind to the fact that there are different types of relationships that you can have um, and even if I was in a monogamous relationship I think I would want to bring in some principles of polyamory so um, for example I got cheated on by an ex-boyfriend who met this girl and would go see her in secret. Mm. Um, and I would want my partner, if they met someone that they liked, to be able to come to me and be like, you know what, I've met this person that I really vibe with. And then we can talk about it. <clears throat> and then if we want to change the relationship dynamic 
for them to explore that, I would totally be open to that. Um, and I would hope that they would be on the same end. But I'd much rather like have a relationship that's collaborative and dis and discusses these things rather than feeling like you have to go behind your back. Um, and also, I don't like the monopoly that romantic relationships have. I don't want to be in one of those relationships where we have to do everything together. We have to have the same friends. We have to do all the same hobbies, all of that kind of thing. I feel like there is a lot to say for relationships that you can just be yourselves in. I want two completely whole human beings coming together or more or more than two coming together in a union where you enrich each other and you support each other without being crutches and without we're not completing each other we're complete in our own right mm -hmm. um and that's the type of relationship that i'm uh, that i'm going to have going forward and i feel really good about that um but yeah i think that's all that i really needed to discuss in my year in review i feel like after a year i've never felt more at home in my identity and at peace in who I am and confident as to what I have to bring to the table um, and what I deserve out of a relationship. So yeah, if any of you have been here since the last Pride, let me know. Um, I'm going to do a side by side on Instagram uh, because I look so drastically different. Um, I am going to be talking about self-expression, but that will be coming next week when you're seeing this. Um, but if you want to see more Pride content, as well as all of the gay reading that I will be doing, I'm doing so much gay reading. Um, so please subscribe to see all of that fun. Give me a like uh, and tickle my bell for notifications. And I'll check you next time.